well, as he introduced his uh, management of pre and post harvest. More than market access, I would call it market choice, though, but um, still, we know that we have several issues already been discussed uh, where we have uh, price stages and need to differentiate the market. This is the important part, need to differentiate during the marketing, so we need to attach a label to our fruit that is recognizable for everybody that it was that it actually attached to and relate to quality so and especially we have for export the market selection especially in asia and we just heard how important is actually the consumer for understanding what is this uh, um, this possibility to export so the consumer satisfaction becomes a very important uh, important aspects as well as uh, the retailers over internally and externally actually what is their power in trying to affect the market however in general we are talking about innovation today and the innovation is uh, most of the time is uh, technology but is uh, sometimes even is uh, thinking and uh, we are trying to understand this uh, concept uh, that uh, we have a value chain uh, in horticulture as well that is on for fresh product that is not only for uh, normally the value chain is considered added value so all the processing is uh, part of this value chain but for fresh product we have most of the time issues because how do you actually add a value to a fruit so to a, to, to a fresh fruit it's not that easy so quality most of the time is actually the part that we can at attach a value and becomes the issue of the fact that uh, um, consumer determines the quality when we consider a, va a value chain uh, because the consumer is already willingness we already had this this presentation before so we understand the willingness we understand what they want and so we have to deliver but to be able to deliver that we need to attach something to this fruit that is actually able to uh, cr go across the entire uh, value chain to the entire chain and how do we actually add a um, value to it my perspective principally is that in uh, in horticulture and in fresh produce is uh, that uh, you actually deliver a fruit you actually have a fruit that you created or a vegetable or whatever that is in the field so you have you have you harvest and that is the quality you have is very the best you can actually do is understanding how that quality develops and maintain the quality so the best that you can do is actually not losing it so by able to understand it how to actually label it and how to measure some parameter or some aspect of that quality through the entire chain that is how you add your value through the different steps now the steps here they are not important it's just a list of showing that there are several aspects and the important part is to try to attach a common value a common denominator a common measure if you are able to measure something into that uh, produce that you are able to transfer and from understand what the consumer wants and there is actually a value a physical value and you are able to transfer it and the back track it uh, continuously up and down and back and forward through the entire value chain and then at that point you are able to actually take a real-time decision this guarantees consistent quality and increase the profitability because you have access to high quality market because you can guarantee something because you can measure it and improve the consumer satisfaction because you are able to attach a number to what they want and you are able to deliver that number now our department is doing quite a bit of research in these aspects of how to try to attach these values and uh, our uh, we believe that maturity or more or less or that is actually is this small machine over here is a difference of absorbance it measures the chlorophyll into the fruit and it can be done into the field and into the shed later on in post harvest and it uh, attaches a number of maturity it is able to through correlations with ethylene that is a physiological aspect of the fruit all, all climateric fruit will produce ethylene and so by correlating these numbers with ethylene we are able to measure and attach a number and this number we believe it could actually be translated and transported across the entire chain it can be lately 
the maturity class is, is to understand the optimal timing of a harvest according to the different market you are trying to sell it and to send it. Because when we know, as we just heard, when we know what, we, what they want, we are able to backtrack and understand everything along the chain. It's variety specific. And now we just this year we delivered, uh, we developed a protocol to uncouple it from the laboratory so we can actually collect. And I have a few things for you guys to see. We can collect, as you can see over there, put in the, in the field, we can collect the gas from the fruit. We put the fruit into the jar, we can leave it for a certain time into the shade, we can collect in these small vials that is evacuated vial, so we collect the gas through a normal syringe, we put it in there, and later on, we can actually put it in the gas chromatographer and understand the ethylene. This uncoupling is fundamental for being able to actually finally start a systematic understanding and the systematic measurements of uh, the va different varieties and the different class, maturity classes, when we're able to define the class we are able to define where the fruit, how the fruit is actually developing in their quality along the entire period in pre-harvest and in post-harvest. For example, this is a August plain peach, and uh, we developed and we measured the development of the maturity according or the IAD value, that is an index of the maturity, more of the actual maturity itself, um, through two different. Uh, um, Training shapes, so we have a V, the Tatura trellis, that if we consider that this is the, the, the row, the, growing, the, the, the tree row, it goes in this direction, the Tatura trellis is a V this way, and the double vertical axis is a V in the, in the opposite way. So it's different uh, how they absorb the sun, and in this case, for this variety, we actually ended up that they were roughly three days the, the, the vertical axis was actually three days later than the Tatura trellis. This is important because most of the new varieties, when they look for, as we just heard, mostly red color. So when we end up looking for red color, these varieties, they color incredibly fast and early in the season. They probably would have the same color. They do have the same color in the field, but you have four days different. That four days different, most of the time, could affect the uh, development of the sugars and therefore you end up with a, with a fruit that is not as sweet as you would expect because of those four or five days difference. And if you know that, so if through this technology, this kind of technologies, we are able to actually understand that part and therefore act accordingly. Now we did studies in post-harvest as well at different temperatures and this is uh, how the IAV develops at after up to 40 days in post-harvest at the two different temperatures, 0 and uh, 7. They do look very different behavior, but it's actually not. We discovered it is actually the same curve. It's just a matter of understanding really the temperature effect and the parameters. However, it is still variety dependent because each variety has a different flesh and therefore it will act uh, differently. And so, underst but understanding this, we can understand how much is the optimal um, storage length because you know the behavior, you know the decaying, you know the de the how it develops and the maturity, how it, uh, how it develops at that point and so we can infer how long you can actually store that fruit at a certain temperature coming out at the value that the consumer would like. But then, how is the quality? Many times, how is actually the quality when you take it out? and how is the quality when you actually put it in. And so uh, we tried, uh, our department is looking into quality as aspect that they are very important for the Asian market, that, that is taste and aroma, as we just heard. And so we are looking at uh, fruit volatiles in intact fruit, that would be when the fruit, when the consumer goes and makes the choice, they smell it, as we just heard. And so we smell it and they need to have a certain smell to be considered quality or in fruit pulp, but that is when actually they bite it the first time and they start chewing, that is a completely different kind of aromas that we taste with our tongue and our noses, and so we are trying to understand that part. So, just a very few um, slides for letting you understand. Uh, here we have 
T0 is the harvest, and then is post-harvest ripening after, in this case, three weeks of cold storage. The classes are C1, C2, C3 is classes where they were immature at harvest, so they were not producing ethylene. We go back to the relationship with ethylene to understand the physiological maturity and what actually are the physiological processes of the fruit. And so we have C1, there was no ethylene product produced at all. C2 is some ethylene, so the fruit is starting the, the maturity process, and that is where usually it's supposed to be harvested. Most of the time, though, it gets harvested here because it lasts longer. C3 is a fruit that is ready to be eaten on the plant. And here, terpenes are florally, <coughs> spice, odor, are important in the essential oils. Is what you actually um, would smell if you want to extract a smell, for example, are not incredibly important in terpen, in, uh, in uh, um, stone fruit, are more important in apples and in pears, these kind of odors. However, in stone fruit is the one that you would actually take if you want to make a, um, uh, like a, uh, a, a, a toy, a candy, or a, the, the, a shampoo, that, that's where they extract those kind of, co of, of odors. And as we can see, they are definitely different at the harvest in their quantity in the fruit produced. And that makes sense that actually the, the more mature, they actually smell better. Three weeks of storage, they disappear completely. Independently, we were not able to recover at all. Lactones, they actually have, is the most important peach component odor, or a peachy component odor for the stone fruit. Here we can see that uh, they do increase at the harvest, in T0, and then we had tested it only twice in the six days as we had before. But the different classes are the same, so the immature, ready to harvest and ready to hit, to eat. At the harvest, they were tendentially increasing, but after storage, they do increase, luckily so, so they do recover. This is often after only one week, though, of storage. We had three weeks before, and most of and certain kind of odors disappear. This one, we started looking at different timing, <coughs> and so after one week, they do recover. But the immature fruit, they are definitely, definitely smelling way less than the others. So cold actually does something. The way we store it is important to try to understand what actually is coming out. And we can manage it if we know how the value obtained with this machine is attached to each of those fruit. And so we can backtrack it knowing these behaviors of the various fruit. We can backtrack it along the entire chain in understanding when the fruit and at which value the fruit should be harvested. And so how do we make quality matter? Or more than matter, how do we make quality profitable? To me personally, is really looking into this value chain concept, value chain system based on and centered on a consumer approach. So in knowing what the consumer wants at the, at the end, attaching a value through different technology, but uh, what we are currently testing, so this technology different, the different of absorption or DA or IAD is the same. This technology is actually a good indicator to be able to use a value chain consumer approach by connecting and correlating agronomical practices, so creating protocols in pre and post harvest and creating predictable and reliable models, then it would be able to really make quality matter. So the future goals for us and to keep going in this concept is uh, to create and to understand better variety calibration, so the correlation for the different varieties between the machine and the ethylene production from the fruit. New protocols in pre and post harvest uh, to understand how they develop in post harvest, uh, the, the DA, how it moves the, 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 the maturity and therefore be able to predict what we would have as quality at the end. Understand uh, the better correlation with the values uh, with the, uh, between the values that we obtain, the DA values and other physiological parameters and possibly even health compounds. Consumer responses is, is 
to attach a value to the consumer response is the, one of the important part, and we need to have fully predictable chain models. And the concluding we have that, to me, the technology allows for a rapid and accurate measurements of fruit maturity along the entire chain, therefore providing consistent quality, and that would increase profitability. And for export especially, internally is not that easy, but for export especially, it would allow, if you're able to guarantee it, it would allow for branding. 